two things that happen I think one is if you worked on radio you, for some peculiar reason you think you can do voiceovers and that's not true the other thing is you have an agent which you know very few people in radio ever have so you, you are reliant on your agent finding work for you but then some people become too reliant on waiting for their agent to find work and that was another learning curve getting into to voiceover I realised one of the early jobs I went to when I walked in I there were a couple of talent coming out. And it was like, oh, you know, see you, Abby, see you, Matt, see you, you know, whoever. And I thought, okay, how do I shortcut this? They know those people, but they have no idea who I am. So how do I make them know me and do it really quickly? So um, I uh, employed a uh, photographer and I said, look, we're going to do that. We're going to make the, the early CD demos because cassettes are just finished. I want to make a CD. But I want you to think, if this was an album, what would you have as an album cover that has to, and I'm a solo artist, what would you put on there? So we shot these photographs. I had the slicks made for the, the CDs. I had the slicks made for the VHS videos at that time, um, headshots, everything, and dropped those to every studio that I knew and every ad agency that I knew. And that was an absolute shortcut because I'd walk in, that the, my CD would be on their desk, be like, oh, that, that face, that face. Oh, it's Andrew. Yeah, hi, Andrew. Take a seat, be with you shortly. So that was, that was, um, that was one of the things that helped a lot. But as far as uh, the, the actual, uh, actually doing voiceovers, man, you, you, you learn that's a baptism of fire when you get in the studio and learning the etiquette of voiceover. Because the first, first thing that went through my mind was, you're paying for an hour, so I better give you an hour's worth. Not realising that they don't want me there for the hour. They want me there for as short a time as possible because you're just I'm just chewing up cash by hanging around. Uh, yeah, that, was, yeah. that was another valuable lesson. It's a different way of communicating. When you're a jock, you very rarely are particularly you. Uh, a lot of it's hypey, you know, jock talk. But when you're doing a voiceover, a lot, lot of this is conversational, it's intimate, it's, you know, one-on-one -on -one kind of... It's a different different way of using um, the way you communicate. Uh, it is much more intimate doing voiceover, which I'm sure some radio people would disagree with, but, um, you know, radio is a different, it's a different beast. You know, you're an entertainer, yeah. you're up there... It's basically you're up there singing, where when you're doing voiceover, you're in there acting, and that's probably the difference... I had to learn pretty quickly because um, that's the only income I had. So it was a, a, an absolute learning curve. And, a, and I was lucky that I worked with some really good people who taught me some fantastic tricks, directors. And there were some really, really weird tricks that you would think, how does that work? But, you know, you're constantly you're falling over something or you're just not getting something right. And it'd be a thing like, just cross that, you know, take out that letter and, and write it upside down and then have another crack at it. And of course, you're, as soon as you get to that point, your brain all of a sudden changes. It's looking, what's that? And refocuses everything and bingo, you've solved the problem. <laughs> 